Welcome to my indoor greenhouse where I built it out of recyclable materials like PVC and plastic. I'm using it to house all of my indoor house plants. But of course, like usual, I'm always coming up with a little bit of issues and I need to figure them out and sort them out so I can keep and maintain humidity throughout the entire winter time. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And if you've been following me and my little current situation, I need some much needed stress relief. Well, my plants are my therapy and plants are therapeutic in general. So I figure I'd take time out to address these three problems that I have inside of my greenhouse. First problem is mealybugs, like mealybug infestation. Number two is all about plant care. I need to water them, heavily water them, and then cut off a lot of dead or dying stems because it is not humid enough, which leads me to problem number three is, I thought one humidifier would be enough, not enough so we're gonna have to raise it up a little bit and take care of some humidity issues the first problem i'm having is mealybugs i know that i had mealybug problem before during the summertime but i didn't think it was gonna get this bad ha <laughs> ha was i wrong okay a lot of my plants have mealybugs now if you know anything about mealybugs is that they look like those skeleton looking ass bugs they're white they look like skeletons really and they attack to all plants. Now, I don't see them flying around like fungus gnats or like, um, you know, any other winged bugs. The difference is with these mealybugs is that these suckers literally chomp on and latch on to your plants and drain the ever-loving life out of them. So that's the problem that I'm having. I got something for you mealybugs. I know this looks a little weird, but this actually has alcohol in them, isopropyl alcohol. Now, what you would do is normally, you know, if you didn't have an infestation, you would wet up the Q-tip with the alcohol and then dab those mealybugs because being that they're not going to fly away, you can easily spot them and get them. But, of course, if you have an infestation of them, you'll be there forever with a Q-tip. Now, the second option is neem oil. This one is mixed in already. It's got a bunch of other different ones. This is something that it's already ready to go. It's got its own sprayer on it. It's already mixed for you and then you can just spray. I have a tendency of making my own neem oil spray using neem oil, dish soap, a little hot sauce or something else mixed in water. But I'm not going through that right now because frankly I kind of lost a neem oil bottle. But I did find this one and this is the one I had. It's got neem oil in it. So we're going to use these two methods to spray the crap out of these mealybugs, get rid of them all, and then we can move on to the next step. Ramen? We meet again. Oh no you didn't little f -er. So first we're gonna go with the neem oil and I'm gonna spray all of this. Look at the assholes. Oh my gosh. Look at them. See how many times have I noticed white stuff. What the F is that? Die, let's die. These over here have been sprayed. Now you notice they do start to change colors if they die. Notice that some of them did not die. This is why I'm not feeling the spray because it's not high powered or pressurized. Let me try it again. That may have worked, but I'm not feeling it still. It's supposed to kill the mealybugs on contact instantly, but I'm not feeling this. I am not feeling this. It's too much of a spray, like a misty spray, and that's not what I need. I need something more concentrated. So maybe I either have to move around this nozzle or just go on to plan B, which is the alcohol pressurized spray. Technically for that pressurized sprayer, you don't have to use alcohol. I guess you could put neem oil spray in this, which chances are if you do this, this will be less taxing on your lungs than the alcohol. Normally you have like a regular spray bottle, right? That is not gonna cut it for what I needed. What I needed was some high powered because I got a lot of plants and maybe I can't reach the right, you know, the right area where the mealybug is. That's where this comes into play. This is one of those pump sprayers, but just a smaller version. So, then this was gonna build up some pressure. So when you do spray, it's got like a huge pressurized stream of alcohol that you can spray on the plants. Being that this is enclosed, as soon as you spray, you gotta get out. You gotta get out because this is really gonna be very, very hard to breathe if you're spraying a lot of alcohol, okay? so. Word to the wise, I had to learn that the hard way. Over there, all those white flecks, those are all mealybugs, all of them. So I need something like this to reach it. Now you're really gonna be putting your paying attention and observation skills to the test here because you really gotta look at every single individual plant and look for anything white. 
white cloudy, white skeleton, something, because they will be there. And if you don't catch them all 100%, they will keep going. I'm looking, and do you see it? You see it? I noticed that this plant was struggling with a lot of crispy leaves. Right over there, white, that little white. Right there, that sign of mealybug. So, we go there, it's a hard place to reach, so that's why I got my high powered spray. Gotcha, bitch! Guaranteed, this always works for me, it really does. Cause I can just shoot the crap out of this from far distances, and it's got pressure on it. Look at that, like right through here, Look at that. I don't have to wear it. Oh, Lord, bug, you need to die. Die, all of you. All of them. Look at that. Oh, and I'm getting an unfurling of a leaf. Aww. All right. Well, this one, this one got hit hard. This palm tree got hit real bad with those mealies. I know. I don't know if the alcohol is really going to do some damage to the plants, but I didn't notice anything for this whole entire time. So I'm hoping that it's going to work, but man, does this need it so bad. They're everywhere. My big plant right up there, that one got hit hard. But right here, my philodendron did not. Look how pretty this is. This is a new leaf. This one did not get hit, and they're sharing different areas down there. Now, I'm, oof, the smell of alcohol. Oof. All right, I'm backing out because that smell of alcohol is very, very strong. Like I said, you need to get out of there and then give it some time to air out because this is super, okay. super strong. This is not like neem oil, but I noticed that the neem oil is not enough. So, I'm using that. Woo, that was a lot of bugs and alcohol later. Now remember, they are not completely 100% eradicated. I'm sure there's some that I missed and they will continue to, you know, procreate and do their bug thing. So that means we have to continue paying attention. We have to continue being observant. Now that I took care of the mealybug problem temporarily, now we're going to work on maintenance or plant care. Now, if I need to take care of myself, give myself some care as a human being, you know, for stress and eating and all these other requirements that we need for our daily living, I'm sure our plants can use it too. I'm going to be chopping off dead leaves, dying leaves, yellow leaves, any plants that have died from the mealybugs or from me forgetting to water them, then they had to come out immediately. At first, I thought it was just me not watering enough. But nope, mealybug, mealybug, mealybug. They are all on that plant, man. If you have a lot of tropicals, like I do, then humidity is key. Now when I first built this, I thought that having this domed in with one humidifier would work. It did work actually, but the problem is it wasn't, it still wasn't enough for the amount of time that I needed it. I felt like some plants and some areas could use more of a humidity boost than others. So I'm going to be adding a second humidifier all the way in the back where the ferns are because those ferns really, really could use a lot of humidity even more than what I had in here. Now, some of my tropicals were okay with the amount of humidity in here, but some plants are just gonna like it even more humid. For example, the ferns that I had back there. They were beautiful in the summertime, and now they're crisping up brown really, really bad. So I wanna be able to incorporate another humidifier right directly under it, around it, just so I can maintain more humidity for longer periods of time. Okay, all right, there we go. Humidifier number one, humidifier number two. Two of them. Uh, now I wanna see how long it will take before it gets purely humid again. Woo, okay, now that we did that, the watering, the maintenance on our plants, we already have been through observing, we already know what plants need more care than others. The dry plants that like it dry and you know, we're not really gonna have a problem with those, but the ones that are really purely tropical, the ones that humidity love and love the moisture and the water, those are the ones you're gonna have to pay attention more, especially throughout the winter time, because their needs are a lot higher. I don't know about you, but I know my needs, personal needs, are a lot higher in the winter time than they are in the summertime. I really hope you liked this video and you got some good information out of this. I know it can be hard to maintain some houseplants throughout the winter time 
or even late fall because a lot of our plants like humidity but we just keep trying and that's all we can do see my fern needs help but that's okay that's what I'm here for and I'm hopefully through helping my plants I can help myself if you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love then don't forget to smash that like button I really appreciate it also if you haven't already then consider subscribing I drop a video who I'm hoping to try once a week given my current uh, personal situation but I hope it all works out when in doubt, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. And also the ADHDGardener.com. And until the next episode, you guys, I really hope that everything works out for the best. I do wish you a happy holidays and all that fun stuff. Until the next episode, you guys, peace and love.